come on, over here. come on. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. That's it. Alright, good boy. <laughs> look at you. <laughs> look at you. Look at you. Oh, look at you. Oh. <laughs> You're such a good boy. Such a good boy. Yeah. You're such a good boy. <laughs> So today the storms have come and gone and everything's starting to melt. It's supposed to be really warm today and I have kind of a problem out here in the barnyard and that is everything got really soggy. Lots of puddles. So today I'm on puddle duty and <laughs> I'll show you how I actually do that. First thing I do is feed Iris if I can, separately. Then I have to move all these cows away from the puddles. Let's see if uh, she'll come over. She's a good girl. And her bag's starting to get big. She should be the first one to calve this year. Alright, Iris. <laughs> Girl, here you go. <laughs> all right, so as soon as he eats all that, I have to work on this mess. So, what happened last year is I actually rent a skid steer twice a year, and I come in here and Clear out all the manure. Basically, I just pile up the manures in the corner. And then last year, I rented the skid steer when it was a little bit too wet, and I dug a little bit too deep, and that's why these puddles are here. This is the worst I've actually ever seen it in here. Usually, I have pretty good drainage. So, as soon as Iris finishes eating, the, the what I'm going to do is take her feeder and move it up on the other side where it's a little bit drier. Boy, look how big that bull is. He is a big boy. I'm glad he's not mean. <laughs> he's acting kind of funny too. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> doing a little stretch. So I have these panels set up that I can just kind of swing them over and isolate all these puddles and Get them over here. This is the first time I've actually seen water on this side, but I'll put the feeder over here and then bring all the cows over here. So basically what I'll do is I'll just fill up the feeder and uh, they'll all come over for the feed. And then I'll show you how I set up my little, I actually use a little pump to actually suck out all the water on all these puddles. And I uh, have to work on huh, this barnyard in such a mess. It's funny when it floods like this, uh, cows are miserable and the ducks are loving it because they're, <laughs> they're all like, they all like the water. So, even little baby's not very happy. Yeah, little baby. Poor little baby. Yeah. Look at these guys. And here comes the plumber to fix our plumbing. So I better go meet him. So Iris is pretty funny when she finishes, she just chews on that feeder. Oh, she heard her name, so she's coming. <laughs> oh, Iris. Okay, so the first thing I did is slide over that feeder. Now it's just a matter of a uh, Pulling all these panels to where there's just one little opening. 
and I'll do that next. Okay, so I have the panels up, and now the hard part, well, <laughs> I guess it's hard, is getting all the cows on the other side. Usually what I do is just grab a handful of hay and run over to the feeder, and most of them will follow. We'll see about this time. So here they come. <laughs> I missed the first part of the video when they were actually running to get the hay. <laughs> running and jumping. Gets a little crazy. So I'll put some more in there so they won't get too distracted. Looks like I got them all this time. So what do I do from here is I just park the cart in here and bring it in a hand, handful at a time. Otherwise these guys will trample the whole cart and me. <laughs> So these big bales of hay are pretty handy. Uh, the way I do it is I just tie this string and then go back about five leaves. That's about how much they'll eat in a day and then they actually fold up really nice. I just put them in the cart. So actually this one feeder here is not enough for all my cows. So, <clears throat> I have to actually feed a little bit separately. I just kind of put it up against the fence so they don't spread it out and uh, they don't mess it up. But that's pretty much it. That'll keep them happy for a little bit and it still gives them access to the loafing shed. Okay, so this is my setup. What I use, I basically use this pump, and it's a, kind of like a, like a suction pump, and it works really, really well, and it gets, puddles all the way down to almost nothing, and then uh, I use the screen just to keep the debris out of the pump, and then I just tie it up to an extension cord up top here, and then put it in the hose, and the hose just drains out of the arena here. I usually set it all up and then I plug it in when I'm at a distance. <laughs> Check out this water. This is actually the deepest I've ever seen. Actually, I scooped this out with the skid steer real deep right here accidentally and it's really deep. So this is the final setup right here before I plug it in. And then uh, let's go plug it in. So there's no water coming out, and usually it primes right away. And then I looked at this little flashing light right here. You can see that. That tells me my electric fence is out. And then I looked at the lights in my barn, my little loafing shed, and my LED lights are out. And then I remembered, ah, the plumber turned the power out to fix the plumbing. <laughs> So we're going to have to wait for the plumber. Alright guys, the plumber just finished. We had a fountain of water right there. <laughs> so let's go check on the pump. Alright, so the pump is working. That's a pretty good stream of water right there. That pump works really good, but it doesn't... Uh, if you kick the hose, it doesn't have any pressure to it at all, so that it'll stop pumping. So at this point, we'll basically just wait for, that'll probably take at least half an hour to drain that puddle and then just move it around. So this thing's been running for about half an hour and it's got a ways to go. I'm thinking maybe another 20 minutes or so on that. Maybe another half hour, that was a big puddle. This is actually more water than I have ever seen out here. And uh, usually it's pretty dry, and in the spring it gets wet. So, actually, it's good to get this on video because we can actually prevent this. Um, so I could actually order a couple tractors of fill dirt, and when I bring the skid steer in, I rent a skid steer every year, and when I bring it in this year, uh, I could fill in these low spots here. Look, those cows are still eating over there. <laughs> so it's actually been an hour on this puddle. I can't believe it. And it's still got a little ways to go. So I actually clear out 
<laughs> wow. I keep getting more and more cows every year and it's, it's harder and harder to manage with all these cows but every year I clean out this whole enclosure all the so basically I come out every day with the wheelbarrow it only takes me like maybe 10 minutes to clean up the, the little cow patties that's why this area is pretty clean but then I put them in these piles over here and as you can see, they keep coming further and further out. And now it's pretty much taken over the whole pen. But what's, what's interesting is when it dries out, the cows really love to lay on these. It's kind of like a straw manure uh, kind of a mixture. But I'm definitely going to clean it out here once everything dries out. I can get a chance to rent a skid steer. But I can show you what I do with this. I've been composting all this manure every year. Believe it or not, this is only six months worth of manure. And uh, of course, last year I had more cows than ever, so this is more than I've ever had. But I can show you what I do to actually compost all this manure. So here's what I call my mountain of manure. <laughs> and actually this is the, the oldest stuff here, and as you can see it just comes out like awesome comp uh, really rich good it's almost like garden soil here it's awesome so what I do every year this is the oldest and on this end this is probably six years old and I'll take a skid steer and I'll move it from here and I'll just move it over a few feet over to there and then continue through the whole pile and this is a big huge massive pile and you can see early on I had, kind of had some sticks in there. And, uh, but it gets kind of greener and greener, I guess you'd say. And here between these two stakes, I kind of planted some potatoes. I don't know if they're going to come up. But, uh, yeah, so this is, oh, this is a whole bunch of manure. And it's going to turn into a whole bunch of really nice compost. This is just one big mountain. And then once you get to this part over here, this is basically the stuff I cleared out last fall. As you can see it still has a bunch of pretty much raw manure and hay still, straw, stuff on this end. So I usually start way down there and then turn it till I get up here and then put the new stuff on this end and let me show you what I plan to do with all the manure after it composts so I actually hooked my garden cart up to my ATV and I brought some of that oldest compost over here and I just tried one little area just to see how it's going to take and this is a, a big huge, this would make a nice little pasture all the way around here, almost as big as where the cows are, and it's just kind of a trial pasture kind of thing. So we have all this kinnikinnik in here, and I basically pulled out the kinnikinnik, kind of raked away um, a little bit of dirt, and then I planted some grass seed. You can just barely see a little bit of grass coming up, just a little bit right there. And I planted orchard grass, which should grow really well. Uh, the only thing is, there's a couple issues, is the deer come through. And if they see that greening up, they might tear it up. And then the other issue, uh, pine needles are actually toxic to cattle. So as you can see, um, I kind of have a problem with all these pine needles if they eat them. Uh, and actually, the mama cow that is pregnant can actually have an abortion if she eats too many pine needles. So that could be a big issue. Uh, I may have to go through and rake it up somehow and try to figure that one out. And then of course there's always this low-lying scrub brush and a lot of stuff to clear out. Ideally, <laughs> you'd clear out most of these trees and maybe just have a couple or change it to just uh, deciduous trees 
instead of evergreens. But yeah, I have six acres here, so it'd be nice to to make a lot of it into pasture where I wouldn't have to feed so much hay. So speaking of pasture, this is the driveway right here, and uh, this would make a really nice big pasture. It's pretty thin through here. You can take out some of the trees, but again, you have all the pine needles and kind of this low-lying scrub brush. And then once you get up closer to the road, the trees get really thick. This would take a lot of work to clear out. And I'm thinking, in order to actually make this some good pasture, you probably have to work at it little by little. But the good thing I like about it is the it's got kind of a slope to it. So really you can irrigate along the road there and it would just come right down. But boy, the thick of them. The deeper you get in here, the thicker the trees get. And it gets to the point where it's just really, I mean the ground's solid, connect neck and the trees get really thick. And it take a lot of work to clear all this out and maybe just leave a couple of really big trees. But I have the land to just have to work it. And it'd be nice to get this. I mean it's, it's this is horse property, so even if I moved out and someone else moved in with horses, uh, it would be pretty nice. But you can see in here, wow, it gets really thick. And then there's this little deer trail down through here and it comes up to the back pen of the cows so I actually put up this this fence <laughs> to try to keep out all the bears and the wolves and the mountain lions and coyotes and it was just kind of a easy way to keep them out and I run this electric wire and use the biggest charger you can get I think it's a 16 joule charger, so it's rated for grizzlies. But yeah, from this angle, I definitely need a skid steer sooner than later. <laughs> so we finally got the first puddle drained. Pretty good. This pump is amazing, actually. It'll keep draining even at that low of a level. It'll keep pushing water. Uh, it doesn't. It's not like an all or nothing. It's a self-priming pump, which is pretty nice. That one is my deepest puddle. That took about an hour and 15 minutes. And you don't want to let it, the pump sit too long without water because it'll overheat and when it overheats it, it automatically shuts off and has a fail safe in it. So let's move it to the next big puddle. That's a pretty big one. I'll probably take another hour at least on that one. So the weird thing about this pump is sometimes it doesn't want to prime and I can kind of keep an eye, it's, it's best to kind of look at the water coming out so you can see if it's actually coming out or not and now it's coming out clear so it's definitely primed. I think what happens is it just gets a little too foamy inside and it doesn't want to prime so I just throw it in here. This is the water I use for my ducks to refill their bowl I'll just pump it out at the end and uh, just a note about that pump if you're having problems getting it primed so this is pretty amazing I missed the middle of the puddle so I moved it over and look look at how much it primed and just like half an inch of water that almost completely sucks it dry that's a pretty awesome pump I don't know of any other pump that would bring it down to that level. So for these little puddles I'm just moving it and it's only taken just a minute or two going puddle to puddle and we're starting to look dry.
Here's the problem I've been having lately is Mama had a new calf and now uh, one of the old calves has decided that she wants the milk too. So <laughs> Mama keeps trying to kick her off but she's basically nursing two calves. And that's not good for the baby because Normally, uh, our mama and black Angus can only nurse one, so we're going to have to figure out something to do with that. Mama's got two babies. So here's another funny thing about these cows is that this is the last of the hay that was in here. So there was a bunch of hay in here. I don't know if you saw it at the beginning of the video. The cows don't really like to eat it so I moved it all into the into the loafing shed over there, his bedding. It's funny they'll be really hungry and they'll all stand around it and they won't eat it. But it's great for bedding because you want a bedding that they won't eat. <laughs> All right, guys. Just finished with the uh, puddle duty in the bullpen, <laughs> and uh, these ducks want to come out and eat some fresh grass. But I'll show you what it looks like. The final product looks much better. I put some hay in the feeder, and managed to drain all the puddles. And then what was left in the puddles, I kind of went and put a little bit of hay. Kind of wanted to show you before the <coughs> all the cows got out here. Then around the feeder, uh, I put a little bit of some old hay in the ground just to, so spot cleaning is a little bit easier. There's a few soggy spots, but in a, <sighs> a little bit out of breath. <laughs> In a day or two, this will all dry out. You won't even know. And these cows are ready and waiting to get to that hay. Look at them. They're going to go crazy. <laughs> They're like, how do we get back there? Yeah. There goes the herd. Going after that hay. They're glad to get out of that pen. <laughs> A few stragglers. Well, thanks for hanging with me and watching what I do on a regular basis. This probably happens maybe four times a year. So I was ready to sign off and Iris comes over and says, wait, you can't finish yet. You still have to give me my second pound, second serving of 10 pounds of grain. <laughs> oh, you're so spoiled. Such a good girl. Oh. Huh. That's the wrong bucket. Alright, here we go. <laughs> so we have pretty much a dry barnyard now, which is pretty good. A few little spots here and there, and everyone's in here, chowing down. <laughs> you 
And you guys punching cattle, just remember, keep your puddles dry and keep your water clean. And I will see you next time.